Um, I get compliments all the time. I have people come to me on a regular basis, walk up to me and like, hey man, um, do you love the eco diesel? Do you, you know, how do you like your Jeep? Uh, have, what kind of fuel mileage does it get on 37s? You know, so on. I love it immensely. But even my kids now don't trust the Jeep to not break down. Okay, so some background. Um, I have wanted a Jeep for a number of years. Um, I guess it started probably about six years ago. Um, kind of started looking at the 2016 models. Um, was kind of dreaming, wasn't quite ready to purchase yet. Um, but kind of started poking around, figuring out, okay, well, what would be the price? What you know, model would I get? So on. Um, was interested in Wranglers at the time, uh, so I was looking at the Sport, and uh, I think at that point they had a maybe 75th anniversary edition, so on and so forth, right? Uh, so I was kind of looking at the Willys and you know the Sport and Sport S, and do I need a Rubicon and all that kind of stuff. Uh, went through all of that, kind of narrowed it down a little bit more of what I wanted, um, but still wasn't quite ready to purchase. And then. I, Year or so later, heard rumors, oh, there's some 2018 models are gonna be refreshed and brand new, and they hadn't refreshed them in a while up to that point. So I thought, okay, well, I'll wait another year and, and we'll we'll see what they come out with. And so uh, into 2018, I think, they finally came out with the refreshed Wranglers, and I was really interested. Um, I remember 2019, uh, spring, I was kind of looking at maybe purchasing at that point and uh comes out it comes around and i start hearing rumors of maybe a, a gladiator truck um so i was like oh well that's interesting and then there was rumors of an eco diesel wrangler so i thought oh well, maybe I'll, I'll wait a little bit um and find uh, see see what happens then you know even when the gladiator eco diesel finally came out and it was in high demand um and so i waited until spring of 21 so this is about five years uh, after I initially wanted to purchase a Jeep. And so we finally purchased April of 21, um, and I'm super excited. Uh, I bring it home immediately because the Sport, with, I ended up buying a Sport S uh, with, um, uh, you know, basic basic package or whatever, some some audio upgrades and whatever, uh, but, but basic. So I brought it home you know, street tires and all that, had to swap it, you know, put a lift on it, 37s, the whole deal. Love my Jeep. Love it. Uh, I recently got back from a Colorado trip, um, you know, took it over some mountain passes, all that kind of stuff. Amazing. Highly recommended. Uh, last summer, I took uh, wife, kids uh, in our camper. Uh, we traveled, I don't know, probably a couple thousand miles at least in our camper, maybe a little more. Um, had some great trips all summer long, loved it. No issues whatsoever, none, okay? Didn't have any issues at all up until June 30th, and there was a deaf fluid recall. Um, some software update about using too much deaf fluid, I don't know a lot of the details, it doesn't really matter, but I took it in for service. Um, I knew that a few weeks later I was going on this Jeep trip to Colorado, I uh, wanted to get the joints uh, serviced and uh, make sure that, that everything was lubricated, um, make sure that there was an oil change, so on. Right? I was in the process of trying to get some new tires and some other stuff because I'd driven quite a lot in the past year and I'd put mud terrains on and they'd kind of worn out already. And I was at 27,000 miles, I believe. Um, I guess I could look here, but I've, I've got the paperwork. Um, so I bring it in. They do the deaf fluid uh, recall. Uh, they do the oil change, they do all of the stuff that I've asked them to do, and they give it back to me. Now, I've had no problems at all in my service center. Uh, they have been fantastic. So I'm not going to complain about my local service center. They are great. That said, I get it back, and I drive it from there to Costco, from Costco back to my house. Now, that's a little over 20 miles. Park in the driveway. Get a call about an hour later from my father-in-law saying, hey, you know, I've got an issue with this trailer. I'd like to help get your help. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So it's about 30 minutes, um, roughly also 30 miles away. And uh, so I jump in the Jeep, drive over there. Um, I park it on the street, and I kind of thought he had everything set up with his truck uh, and his uh, tow set up or whatever. Um, so I thought 
was going to be using his truck to move it and shuffle things and get it leveled and all that. Um, that was not the case. I get there and he thought I was going to use my truck. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So I get my truck uh, again on the street. I kind of turn it back it down the driveway and I'm trying to get things set up and he's making it a little more complicated than it needs to be. So it's taking a few minutes. I'm like, well, let me not burn the diesel. Shut the truck off. So shut the truck off. Um, at this point, we get everything set up, get the, get the trailer hooked up, and I get back in the truck, hit the start stop button, nothing. Now all the accessories come on, the lights on the dash, everything comes on, nothing happens as far as starting the Jeep. There's no trying to turn over, there's no nothing whatsoever, okay? Like, that's weird. Like, hmm, I have the keys in my pocket, so I check and see, yeah, I've got the keys. Okay, so I hit the start stop button, turn it off, wait a second, turn it back on, nothing. Hmm, that's really weird. Do this a couple times. Hmm, nothing. I wonder what that could be. So I start kind of poking around, I do this a few more times, and I finally get an error message saying like a safe mode, essentially. And you'd ha I'd have to wait 60 seconds, and there was a, like a countdown timer. It was counting down, okay? So I'm like, okay, well, maybe, maybe just had to reset. I don't know. So all those starters in my previous experience didn't have any componentry to uh, tell it not to, to be used, but uh, I don't know, whatever. So I'm like, well, maybe that's it. Maybe it'll reset. So I wait 60 seconds. Do it again, same thing, nothing. So this is going on for a few minutes now. I'm like, okay, wait a second. I just took it in for service. And now I'm having issues with it. Let me call the dealer. So I call them up. Hey guys, what's going on? So I talk them through everything that I've, I had them do, and we both kind of agree, and like I'm calling them on a whim because I know we, at this point, what they did shouldn't have anything to do with the issue that I'm experiencing at the moment. But I'm like, well, I don't know what else to do. And I did just have it in for service, so I'm gonna call them. And so we're kind of talking and we kind of come to a similar agreement. Yeah, this shouldn't be related, but let's go through some checks. So we go through through some things, and I don't know why I hadn't thought of it up to this point, but he goes to ask me to go check the fuses. Immediately, I, I it triggers, duh, check the starter fuse. So I go through, and I, I find the starter fuse on the little panel, um, find it, pull it, it's blown. Now, at this point, I'm looking at it, I'm like, that's a weird fuse. I've come to find out they have been using for the past year or so a brand new microfuse. It's there's other microfuses on the market, don't get me wrong, but this particular type of microfuse is brand new to the auto industry. Um, I went to several different shops at this point, including Jeep, uh, the local Jeep dealer there, which was not my dealer, and they didn't have it in stock. They didn't even know what it was. They hadn't seen it before. Okay, so. I don't know, after three or four shops, I go to Napa, I go to like an AutoZone, uh, I go to Jeep, obviously. Um, nobody has it. Nobody can get it for days. So I don't know why. Again, not thinking, kind of flabbergasted at the fact that I'm having issues in the first place. Um, like, duh, there's extra fuses usually in the fuse box. Let me go check. So we get back to the, the house where, where he's at, uh, my father-in-law, and sure enough, of course, there's an extra fuse. I don't know why I didn't think about this before, but I've wasted about an hour, hour and a half. Go ahead and swap fuses, starts right up. I have no issues. Hmm, okay, well, cool. So I get back in the truck, drive it home, okay? Well, we did what we needed to do, but I drove it home. Um, drove it several times after that, no issues, okay? Now, that was June 30th. Okay, July 5th, fast forward, day after July 4th, of course, um, I'm taking the family on a trip uh, down to the beach. And so it's three and a half hours, maybe four, no, probably four, um, four hours down there. And we get a couple hours into the trip. Uh, we are, well, maybe more than that. I don't know. We're about 180 miles from home and I need fuel. So we pull into a QT gas station. Um, I pull in to get diesel and uh, go ahead and start up the, the engine uh, to pull off to the side. My family's inside. They're getting you know snacks and drinks and that sort of stuff or whatever. I pull off to the side. I've got the camper behind me. Keep in mind, uh, maybe 5,000 pounds uh, loaded. Um, 
and it doesn't start. Everybody gets back in the vehicle, and I hit the start stop button, nothing happens. So I'm like, that's strange. So at this point in between, I, once I realized it had this weird microfuse, I went and purchased a bunch of them right before this trip because I was like, well, I don't ever want that to happen again and not have an extra fuse, and I just used the one spare. It's a 40 amp fuse. This is important later. So that 40 amp fuse, I bought a bunch of them, uh, several. And they were like, I don't know, four or five dollars a pop. So we're now at the QT, back to the story, and it doesn't start. So I'm immediately like, oh, well, the last time I just swapped the fuse and it was fine. So I'll let me go ahead and swap the fuse. This shouldn't be happening, but at least I can get back up and running quickly. So I reach in, grab the fuses, um, open the hood, pop the fuse box, pa box panel, swap the fuse, and nothing. Get back in the Jeep, hit the start stop button, nothing. So now I'm confused. I fully expected that to work. So, okay, well, Get back out. I just put a brand new fuse in there, kind of scratching my head, going, What in the world? Okay, well, let me pull the fuse. It's blown. The new fuse that I just put in there was blown. So at this point, I'm like, Well, I didn't actually look at the fuse before I put it in there. Maybe it was already faulty. It was already blown. Can't imagine that being the fact from the factory, but let me put another one in. So I grab another one out of the bag, put another one in there walk back around, hit the start stop, bo stop button, nothing, okay? So now I'm like, okay, this is weird. So I get back out, pull the fuse, blown. Okay, now I know there's a short. So I kind of look around and I don't see anything right off the bat. Uh, you know, again, I'm kind of on, on the side of the road here. I'm on, well, not on the side of the road, I'm at a QT gas station, but still, I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere, okay? I've got my wife, my kids, a camper. It's like 7 o'clock or maybe a little before, like 6.50 or something like that. So I start calling Mopar. I've got roadside assistance. So I call them up and I don't know what to do with a camper. So it's one thing to get roadside assistance with my Jeep. It's another thing with a camper altogether. Now, I have a roadside side assistance thing through Camping World for my camper as well. Um, but I didn't know what Jeep would do or Camping World. So I kind of had to call back and forth and figure out who's going to do what. So I'm on the phone for a few hours trying to get some answers here, having to go back and forth between these two. And finally, what we figure out is that because it's now too late, the dealership has closed. Um, my Jeep can't be towed until in the morning is what they're telling me. So I have to leave my Jeep at the QT. Uh, camping World says they will tow my trailer, my camping trailer, to a local, and only local, um, camping facility, campsite, nearby. It's about a mile and a half, two miles away. That's, that's their rule. They, they just tow you to the nearest spot, drop you off, and you're done. Okay? Anything else I have to pay for? Well, I got the price on that. It's like $1,500 to $2,000 to tow back home. Or, you know, so I'm going, no, I'm not willing to spend that much money right now. Um, not to mention that I have it just simply to tow my vehicle or tow my camper. Um, so anyway, go ahead and get the camper towed to the local site. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Fortunately, they had a pool for the kids. Get the Jeep towed the following morning, and they say, hey, it's going to be a couple of weeks before we can look at it. Obviously, this is not ideal. We're supposed to be at the beach right now, and you're telling me I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere for two weeks? My wife has to work, I've got stuff I've got to do, my kids, you know, we're in a small camper. That's fine for a trip if we're doing things, but if we're just sitting in the middle of nowhere, I also don't have enough groceries for that amount of time. I have no vehicle. So I kind of explain all of this to them. Like, look, you gotta get me back on the road somehow a little faster than that. Um, and they told me, you know, look, if we have to get components, et cetera, the component shortages, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, I get all that but can you just get it started? I have a full tank of, of fuel. I just need my Jeep to run. I don't care how, <laughs> like magic. I don't care what you do. Just get me on the road so I can drive. I will not shut it off again because there seemingly has no issues. It has no issues while I'm driving. Um, just get me on the road. I'll take it to my local dealer and let me just get back home. At this point, I've ditched the trip. It's not even a possibility in my mind. I'm like, we're, we just need to get home. 
Like, I, we can't be stuck in the middle of nowhere with an unknown time frame, uh, with a Jeep that isn't reliable, um, and potentially have this happen again even further from home. Let me just get back home. So they work with me, and they're like, look, we'll try to squeeze you in tomorrow. Um, can't do anything today, but maybe tomorrow we can take a look at it. Now, J July 5th was a Tuesday, so now we're at Wednesday already because we waited till the next morning. We were traveling on Tuesday. Um, now it's Wednesday, they're saying it's gonna be looked at on Thursday. So Thursday comes, I don't bother them all morning. I, I wait till mid-afternoon. I haven't heard anything and I call them. Hey, have you had a chance to look at it? No, we haven't. Now this dealership was very, very nice. They were working with me. Um, they actually took me to, uh, they had a little uh, concierge service where they would pick up and drop you off. And they took me to a local um, enterprise rent a car where I rented a car. Uh, so we could actually get about, get some uh, some groceries, all that kind of stuff. Um, we actually took a trip uh, to a local beach anyway that was a little bit closer with that car, um, trying to keep the kids busy, whatever. Uh, but we're stuck in a camper in the middle of nowhere. So, you know, uh, yeah, doing what we can. So in the midst of this, um, we go ahead and, and I know this is long, I apologize, but I'm trying to give you context. So we go ahead and uh, it, it, fast forward, Friday comes along. They don't get a chance to look at it till Friday. They finally start looking at it um, Friday and they call me, or I actually call them, I'm sorry, at four o'clock on Friday, because I'm nervous now. Am I gonna have to wait the weekend? What, what's going on here? So I call them and uh, you know any updates and they're like, look, we just got it running actually. Um, we kind of want to keep looking at it. We don't know what's wrong with it, but it's functional uh, at the moment. It's, it's running at the moment. and. Um, you know, the technician's still looking at it. At this point, I just beg. I'm like, look, can I just have it back? I'll leave it running. I will jump in the Enterprise rent a car. I will go to Enterprise. If you can have your guys a couple miles away, pick me up. I will run over there and I will pick up this Jeep and I will not shut it off the entire time and get home. So they agree. So I go, I get it. They explain to me. Um, at this point, they put a 50 amp fuse uh, where the, st the 40 amp starter fuse is supposed to be. Somehow or another, that supposedly got her up and running. I don't quite understand that. They assure me this is fine. Uh, they overrate it. And so it doesn't necessarily need to be a um, 40 amp fuse. So, you know, at this point, I, I'm perfectly happy uh, that, that it's up and running. I don't really care. Uh, I'm going to take it to my local dealer anyway. So I pick it up. I get in my camper. I drive home. A couple days later, uh, July 12th, um, I take it to my local dealer. Uh, I think I waited till that following Monday. Um, so anyway, I take it to them. They look, uh, they can't replicate the issue. Let me preface this. They can't replicate it at all. But they're looking around. The technician finds that, uh, let, me, let me read this off so I don't get this wrong. There's a wire they called T750 and it's a YE slash GY wire somebody out there, some technician's going to know what, what the heck I'm talking about. Um, they called this was going to a C2 connector on the starter and had melted to the motor mount. They put a wire loom to protect it further as only the casing had melted, but not all the way through. They thought that with the amperage going through that wire, it was possible it could still be enough draw to cause the fuses to blow even though there was no direct contact. So they also replaced, I should note, um, they replaced my 40 amp fuse, or my what they put in was a 50, back to a 40 amp fuse and gave me an extra spare, which I appreciated. So I was about to embark on a 4,000 mile round trip out to Colorado and back. Uh, my wife had planned months and months and months ago, almost a year ago, uh, for my 40th birthday. Um, we, we were going to go do a, a ton of mountain passes, Imogene Pass, Black Bear, some other stuff. It, it was phenomenal. I've included some photos just to show how much I love my Jeep. You can also see that some of the few photos from that trip, epic. It was amazing. But I wasn't sure I could trust the Jeep. In the end, they found this issue with the starter, the wiring, and I thought, maybe that's going to fix it. Let's risk it. So I go ahead and I pick up the Jeep. I drive it home and I pack up and I get ready to go on this 10 day road trip. 
we go out, we come back, no issues whatsoever. I must have turned this thing on and off a hundred times, easily, okay? No issues whatsoever, okay? Fast forward, August 3rd. Uh, I, friends, some friends had offered for us to come out to their beach house for a week. Um, we go ahead and go out. Uh, no issues whatsoever while we're out there. Uh, drove around quite a bit. And I thought, at this point, the Jeep's fixed. I don't have any problems. So I go ahead and I'm, we're getting in the car, we are getting in the Jeep. We drive back uh, with family and uh, no camper at this point. And I am stopping about 45 minutes into the trip back home. I think it's maybe five hours. Um, and I stop off at a fueling station. Uh, again, <laughs> seems reminiscent. Fuel up, hit the start stop button, nothing happens. It's like crap. So I swap the fuse immediately blows. Swapped another fuse, immediately blows. So at this point, I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to call Mopar and have them tow it to the local dealer. There's nothing else I can do. There is fortunately a couple hotels right across the street, and I tell my family it's 90-some degrees out. Go ahead and pack up, grab your stuff, and head over to the hotels because I don't know what else to do. So I go ahead and have them go over across the street. They check in um, and get a towed off the local dealer, uh, they immediately tell me, oh, we'll probably have it back to you this afternoon. I'm skeptical. It's like 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. Um, so regardless, I'm expecting it to be at least morning, even if they really can pull off some sort of miracle and get me back on the road. I tell them the same thing, you know, give them the whole rundown, everything that's happened to it, and uh, I'm like, look, just get me back on the road. <laughs> I just want to get home. I trust my local dealer. I'll have them look at it. They take it in, they're kind of skeptical of this whole story that I've told them, everything that's happened, but they look at it and they tell me, oh, we're gonna replace this component. They replaced the 12 volt and the stop start battery, the security gateway module, and the transmission wiring harness. Now, they did not have all that in stock. Uh, this goes on for a little more than a week. I don't have my Jeep back, I think it was about eight days. During this time, I just borrow my friend's car, we drive home with it, and he says, you know, don't worry, I'm coming back that way. Anyway, I'll just pick up your vehicle when it's ready, and I'll bring it to you, and we'll swap back, which was immensely awesome of him. I, I, I really, really appreciated that. Um, so we get home, I'm, I'm awaiting. So they finally, well, they actually don't really tell me much of what they're doing. Um, they just tell me it's ready, and they, had, they don't really give me a rundown of what's happened which was a little strange, but I get it back. He drives it back here and uh, I'm like, okay, well, this is interesting, but let me kind of see what they did. So I find a 60 amp fuse now in my starter box where there was supposed to be a 40, a 40 amp. Um, it shouldn't be there. I'm not happy it's there. It's still there now because I don't have any more fuses left. Um, I've gone through all of them, okay? At my expense, I bought those. I look underneath the vehicle because they replaced the transmission wiring harness. I'm like, the transmission wiring harness? Why would you, why would you replace that? Start stop battery and all that, I kind of expect it to a degree. I also expected a starter, but that hasn't been replaced. So I look up underneath and there's all this wiring and everything's wrapped. So they, they, I call them up and they tell me, oh, well, some of the wiring was melted. Wow, okay, so yeah, they're like, yeah, it gets really hot under, underneath there and the wiring goes a little too close to some of those components and it, because it heats up, it melts the casing and so then it can short out and that's what happened. That was apparently the root cause, according to them. So they replaced it. Well, I look up underneath there and uh, I'll show a short clip video of, of what I, well, it's not that short, but uh, a video of what I found um, and there was a few other issues other than just the starter fuse, which I really wasn't happy about. Um, well, there, there's a uh, rattling that goes on inside underneath the dash. I assume that's where they replaced that uh, security gateway module. Um, and then the transmission wiring harness. Here's the engine bay of the Eco Diesel Gladiator. And over here we've got the fuse box and I've already removed the cover uh, just to make this a little bit easier. The first things first is this right here is the fuse that keeps blowing. I'll get in a little closer. That was the starter fuse, or is the starter fuse, I should say. Um, that's a 60. It's supposed to be a 40. 
and somehow or another I got this back with at first a 50 and now a 60 amp fuse in here, which is way higher than it's supposed to be. And even though they're saying, oh, it can handle the load, I'm pretty skeptical of that. Excuse my dirty footwell here, but the second issue I have is actually up underneath here, uh, underneath the steering column. Let me see if I can get up underneath here real easy. Well, real easy is a misnomer. Let's see if I can get a little light in here. I apologize for this. This is not exactly easy to get to. Aha. All right. This bracket holds some component, which honestly, I have no idea. And I don't know that it necessarily matters, but it keeps doing this. Rattling down the road. And as you can see here, probably there's supposed to be a screw, which they did not replace. The third and far more important issue here is, well, not just this, but this is one tiny piece of a very significant wiring harness, uh, the transmission wiring harness. So wherever you see this cable wrapping here, silver wrapping, this has been replaced. Um, there's a lot, but you can see it where it's wrapped you know, up in here, right? And they actually went through the time to wrap it. See the zip ties, they wrapped it here, going up, way up in there. Um, let's see, there's more back here. I don't know if you can quite see it behind all that. Some labeling. Um, and it kind of comes and wraps itself back. Let me go further down, back behind the vehicle. You can see though that everything here is actually tucked away. Let me say that first. Everything's kind of tucked exactly where it's supposed to be, at least seemingly. You can see maybe uh, like this. It's actually clipped into where it's supposed to be. This is my problem. Now, here's the engine bay here. As we go back towards the rear of the vehicle, We'll see at different intervals. Let me see if I can get to the right spot here. There's more of that same cable. There's a larger one, larger spot there, and it branches out, right? But as we can tell, let's see if you can catch this. So this is not plugged in. Uh, this is the one that I actually plugged in. This was dangling down before. There's another one here, uh, another black uh, plug component, another one here, right? And it looks like they broke off the original connector. So yeah, it would be very difficult to get back in, um, but they did not take the time to actually put this where it's supposed to go. You can see here, not where it's supposed to be. Another one of those plugs, another one here. Uh, None of this is tucked away where it's supposed to be. And I don't know exactly what's going on up above all of this. I can't even get to it, but it's not put away. I know, maybe I could see now with this. It looks okay. But you can see the exhaust system here, right? My understanding is this in particular is getting up to about a thousand degrees. I understand this correctly um, and yeah that's I mean you've got other wiring components like this which is not adequately shielded for that level of heat right going along here along the exhaust and you know this is actually broken out of its sheathing. It was not replaced. Um, and my concern is at some point they're gonna break. I mean, you could see, I don't know if I can find one right now, but there's instances, uh, where was it? Oh, here, here's a good example. This is next to the exhaust and we've got bare wire hanging out here. Let me see if I can get it from this side. All right. 
you can see the bare wire past the sheathing. Um, well, it's not bare wire, I suppose. It's covered. It's still coated in its original... Uh, I'm not sure what that is. I want to say plastic, but obviously it's not plastic. Um, sheathing, but, you know, still not exactly the way I would do it. But this is not acceptable. Nothing's put back where it's supposed to be. At least at this end of the engine. So after doing some digging, apparently there's an issue with the eco-diesels and the def fluid, which causes the catalytic converter to heat up to a thousand degrees. Now that part's normal. Apparently it's to burn off all the emission stuff. Um, but for some idiotic reason, they decided to put route electrical cables near the exhaust components. And if a simple match can melt the casing of an electrical wiring, right, melt that casing, then of course a thousand degree heat is going to be able to do the same thing. I really don't understand where the engineers thought that, oh, simple plastic rubber, whatever the heck casing that is, that'll hold up well to a thousand degrees. No issues. Let's just put that right next to uh, the exhaust components. I'm not exactly smart. Anyway, my issue now is that I am almost out of warranty. I've got 33,000 miles on my Jeep, um, and I don't know if I should risk keeping it or not. Um, I love my Jeep. Like, I really love my Jeep. I look at it every time, and I'm like, man, I love this thing. I get all sorts of questions. Like, I, I, I've been in Kentucky. I've been in Tennessee. I've been in Virginia. I've been in North Carolina. I've been several states and I get stopped all the time and I tell people I love it. I love, love, love this Jeep. I have no issues with it. It's great. I get great fuel mileage even with the Lift and 37s. Uh, it's got more than enough power, more than enough torque, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? It's basically ruined two family vacations and we're at a point now where basically in my Colorado trip, the third trip, that particular trip, the whole time I was worried about it starting back up again and, uh, you know, whether it was going to or not, you know, um, was I going to be stuck on a, a 13,000 foot uh, high elevation pass and I can't start my Jeep, right? Um, this, this is where I'm at. I bought it to be able to overland it and go to places I couldn't get to otherwise. Um, and now I'm concerned that not only, I mean, they heat shrink wrapped, whatever, they wrapped uh, the electrical wiring to protect it, which I'm thankful for. I'm thankful that they took the time to actually do this, but I'm not convinced that that's the only wiring I'm gonna have problems with long-term. And do I keep the Jeep? Um, could some other component be shorted? And do I keep it or do I risk, and, and risk that happening again, or I don't know, or do I get rid of it? And I waited for years to get this Jeep. And I really wanted it, and now I have it, and I can't trust it to be reliable. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do here. So I'm throwing this out on YouTube because hopefully anybody else out there has an eco diesel that it will be helpful to them to hear this, to know, to maybe go and heat shrink some of this wiring themselves, uh, protect it in some way. I don't know. Um, but some people should know about this, uh, and I, I'm still on the fence. I, I'm, I'm trying, trying to hold out hope that it's fixed. I'm not going to have any more issues. I'm going to be able to keep this thing. I love it, um, but I'm, I got to put my family in it and take road trips and do stuff. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't seem smart. So anyway, that's my spiel. Hopefully this helps somebody out there. Um, not, I'm pretty new to this sort of thing, so uh, yeah, I'm putting it out there for the world and uh, forgive any errors that I may have made, um, but yeah, I hope this is helpful to somebody.